Welcome back to the table and again welcome to some shadow. I tested doing this with direct overhead lighting like I tend to do but the page was just a bit too glossy and getting a bit too machine it's too distracting I felt so here we are this way hopefully it's not worse we'll see uh, you'll never know but if you see this then hey it's the better of the two so welcome to another episode of from the archive I did a 40k episode last time so this is a non 40k episode this is on a fun gaming series that um Vigil and THQ, you know, hit some financial setbacks and whatever, so the game kind of got tossed around, but or the game series, but uh, we'll never truly get to see it as a cohesive, concise, one studio thing, if you will, or if you want to call about it, but it's still a job well done. This is the Darksiders franchise, and this is the art of Darksiders, specifically Darksiders 1. There's a separate book for Darksiders 2. So... The Darksiders game, I remember when it was first coming uh, out and being developed as Darksiders, you were playing as War, which you are playing as, one well, of the Four Horsemen War. And it was basically, you were going to be going around doing certain things, certain tasks. This is very early when we learned about it uh, fairly early on. And you would, you would be able to harness weapons from War from different time periods because you are the embodiment of War. That hasn't necessarily 100% change, but it definitely went in a bit of a different direction as it got later in its development. And it's a fun game. The best way to describe Darksiders 1 in particular, and to an extent the sequels to it, is it's like God of War meets Zelda. Uh, you have a hookshot type weapon, you have a Megaton Hammer type setup as well, so I'm using Ocarina of Time references, but um, you have Similarities there. Yeah, similarities to God of War in terms of um, some combat concepts and uh, leveling up gear and, and type of stuff that way. So, it's a... I would place Darksiders in a sci-fantasy type of scenario because we do have some magic-y stuff and ancient evils and ancient holiness. And then we also have technology incorporated throughout all of it as well. So... It's a blending amalgamation of science fiction and fantasy, I feel. So this this art book literally gives us everything. It gives us everything from illustrations to characters to artifacts to CG gallery and everything else in between, including early icon designs for the icons in the game and everything. So truly uh, an art book for the entirety of the game design, you could say, which is kind of cool. Now the spine is a little frail, as you can see, it's a little damaged. It's like a bunch of mini books glued to a thin spine. Part of this is because I think the construction of the book isn't meant to be super robust and durable. And secondly, well, when my stuff went into into storage, it was it, it I did the best I could with knowing where it's going to be stored and the temperature and everything else like that. And it this is the end result. Some stuff just gets a little damaged, and you have to deal with it. Anyways, we start off with the actual intro of the game, which I won't read or anything like that and then we go right into war you are playing as war one of the horsemen and what's cool about the darksiders franchise is that each game you're basically a different horseman um so they tell you like this is a wizard magazine cover right here they tell you where some of these art designs come from for just standard illustrations if it's a cg render or a test image they'll also tell you that so you get a bit of a clue about how old the image is in, in the design of the game or what have you. So Darksiders 1 came out um, alongside more or less Bayonetta. So this was kind of the sleeper hit of the two, right? Bayonetta was well known, well hyped, fine game, but Darksiders was a bit more of the unknown. And people who got both, when they decided to, they would decide to give Darksiders a try, they found themselves having a hard time putting it down and actually did, I think, rather well for itself. I don't know how much of a financial success it was, but it definitely became a bit of a fan hit, for sure. Um, early concepts war is just guy with a sword. So, um, I believe the early concept of the game name-wise was like Soul Harvest or something. And here is Future War, which you never get to see in the game as they went through their concepts and design. And then we have War rendered as we have come to know and love them. Complete with Power Fist and Power Sword, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, very heavily armored up, um, heavily equipped. 
He uses a variety of weapons. It's very Zelda-esque. You, you have a boomerang type thing for when you need to use a boomerang. You have um, different abilities depending upon what you... I mean, via gear, right? You have um, your classic sword. You have your uh, Omega Thun hammer type deal, if you will, or just a hammer type deal. I like using Ocarina references, Ocarina of Time references, anyway. You have your own type of sick and twisted Navi and so on. So you have things going on for you. You have, a, you have your own um, metal version of Epona, right? So uh, you have that. So here are the other horsemen characters in the game. Not that you get to play them, but you get to uh, learn of them. And So you have War, Death, Fury, and Strife. Fury and Strife being a departure from the classic four horsemen that you probably know are from biblical stuff or whatever. Which is fine, it doesn't need to be the classic Four Horsemen of the Bible. This isn't following religion very closely. It's very loosely using terminology and naming structure. I, I, don't, I don't recall any charred council in the Bible, but I could be wrong. I'm not really well versed in it, to be honest. The Watcher is your sick and twisted Navi, voiced by Mark Hamill. Volgrim is kind of your main like shop NPC, if you will. Uh, and he has some other just main characters. Now the angelic design that we ultimately will see come to fruition in Darksiders, I am a fan of it. I think they did a very good job. It feels inspired by the Diablo designs, to be honest with you. And while Diablo's angels are my all-time favorite aesthetically done angels, the Darksiders, Hell Daughters they're called, um, are very well done as well. It's a blending of classic mythos of angelic design and plate with modern-esque and science fiction-esque concepts with cannons and swords and armor blended onto their wings and whatnot. It's just a very well done um, overall design for uh, the angels. And then you have characters like Samuel and Lilith and everything else. Uh, just, you know, inspired by their names that they come from. And the, the aesthetics are all very well done. It's very much its own aesthetic. It's not trying to copy the Diablo franchise or Warcraft or um, Warhammer or anything like that. It definitely feels all its own. And that's important for a game like this. We have the Hunter. And we just have um, a bunch of designs for different things from the Wicked, which are just kind of like your basic grunt type things you kill, to other minions, and it goes on and on. So, their art design for things definitely feels good. It doesn't feel boring or samey. It doesn't feel like it's just a carbon copy of anything either. And again, that helps you stand out and, and leads to its, its uh, success, I feel. The Jedi was an interesting concept as well. But uh, very fun gameplay. If you enjoy Zelda-type gameplay, like if you enjoyed Ocarina of Time and the other uh, 3D Zelda games, and you enjoyed... Uh, aspects of the God of War series in terms of combat and, and, and the way equipment gets powered up and whatnot. This is a good blending of those concepts as well as trying to do its own thing. Um, it's not a literal uh, fusion of the two, but definitely you can see the inspirations from them. So, uh, setting-wise, the game more or less takes place on Earth, but it's not an Earth we are aware, we are um, aware of or know. It is a fictional universe, Earth, that uh, is post-apocalyptic for sure. Basically, the apocalypse happens. War goes to Earth because he believes that uh, the seals were broken, which needs to happen and everything, and thus the, uh, the apocalypse and stuff can happen. Tricks, not really the case, and we get to see humanity fall. Not 100%, but we get to see the beginnings of its fall. And the actual main story of Darksiders 1 is, oops, humanity's very much dead now, we gotta clean up the mess. We don't revert time, we don't change anything, we don't save humanity, and I thought that was a really refreshing, neat concept, because typically, even if you don't play a human character, which we're not, the story tends to also involve, hey, fixing this. And that's not really the case here, so I thought that was pretty cool. And um, it was refreshing for sure. Here's some design of that with some ruined buildings. We see that in kind of uh, other designs of the city concept and even like a Wild West desert concept and an early map concept and uh, near final map concept here. Uh, it's 
like I said, earthly, but not an earth that we're familiar with. We can't really say this is this nation, X, Y, or Z, or whatever. It's more so just fictional earth that's been obliterated. And, uh, whoops, my bad. So, really well done design that way. And then we have uh, just the design of the different dungeons and bosses and everything else. This all handled very well. A nice blending of corruption of hell and ruin of being post-apocalyptic, but still being grounded in some type of reality design for stuff to make us feel like, yes, we are definitely charging through the wastes of Earth. Um, so that's kind of neat. And as you can see, the spine is really kind of all tore up unfortunately but it holds together well enough uh really cool art design for war but somewhere in here we get to see some more angelic designs and i'm a big fan of the angelic design so let's see if i can find it uh it might be earlier e no yeah we'll go get in there but anyways um this is kind of in-game models and stuff that we're seeing and here we have some more angels we have the light angels, meaning they're like a light infantry unit. Their sword also incorporates a ranged weapon. Then we have the storm bolter, not the 40k gun, but an angelic unit that uses a sky bolt gun. <laughs> and then we have the angelic champion down here. They're not energy wings per se, but they're not strictly just feather. They do have a bit of a glow and a hue to them. And, uh, you know, armored up with technology and armor and classic design and everything else. And it's just really well done. I really appreciate the design aesthetics of the Hellguard, which is as they're known. But, um, Diablo Angel is still my favorite. But these guys, I feel, are in a solid second place. I can't really think of anything that competes with the Darksiders Angelic design. And I really enjoy that type design as a, as a creature type, if you will. So, um, that's why I constantly bring it up. But a lot of really cool design stuff here. If you can use inspiration for fantasy, sci-fi gaming, you know, 40k, Age of Sigmar, whatever, War of Hordes, if you so desire. A lot of inspiration to be drawn from if that's your bag. If it's not your bag, it's just cool art to look at for a game that's definitely worth playing. Um, cool book. I would have loved to see the game basically stick with its with its original studio and have that studio not have to do and you know basically go away and see what could have been but the Darksiders series i'm a fan of i think it's done well Darksiders 2 is not exactly the same as Darksiders 1 in terms of how it plays but it's similar enough that you you will have enough of an understanding if you played Darksiders 1 and it does have its own art book so i won't harp on that too much but anyways Darksiders 1 uh i followed it i was Looking forward to it coming out when it did. But there are definitely, you could look back at people, uh, initial impressions of Darksiders 1 that kind of bought it as, okay, we'll see what happens here, we'll take a chance. And uh, most people were not disappointed. It was, it's definitely a, a fun ride for sure. I don't platinum games, but I definitely did unlock the Abyssal Armor in my original playthrough. I did all that chest and then do a new game plus, if you will, with Abyssal Armor. But, anyways, um, I'm rambling now, as I always do. A cool art book. I don't know how readily available it is. Um, you would have to look on like an Amazon or anything else. But uh, don't let the damaged spine turn you off if that's what you're looking for. And in terms of this book, if you're worried, oh, the durability of the book. It's been, I don't want to say rough handled by me, but it's been in, in hot and humid conditions you know, in storage uh, locker type stuff. So uh, it's in pretty decent condition, all things considered. Anyways, don't spend crazy money on it, but it's definitely a cool art book if you enjoy art books like I do. I'm a big sucker for art books, for settings that I enjoy. I'll always have an interest in them. So share your thoughts and thanks very much for sticking through this. Until next time, take it easy.